This is a story of how the geology at the Earth's surface relates to processes happening much deeper in the Earth, in the mantle. And we can focus on the Sea of Japan. Geologically, it's a young ocean basin formed as Japan rifted away from the rest of Asia 23 million years ago. Back then, the rock units of Japan joined up with those on Asia, connecting the Korean Peninsula with the island of Sakhalin. But in the following 20 million years, the Sea of Japan opened. The crust rifted apart. So today, Japan is an island chain, which might seem a little odd because the tectonic plate margin here is one of plate convergence coming together, currently at the rapid rate of over eight centimetres a year. Let's put that in context and step back across the Pacific to where new ocean floor is being created. Here, Google Earth is colour coded for the age of the seabed. Bright red means the ocean floor is just 10 million years old or younger. That symmetrical pattern tells of seafloor spreading, new plates being created along the East Pacific rise. Let's cruise west to the Asian side of the Pacific. Where ocean floor formed long ago runs up against and beneath the Asian continent. But these are patches of much younger seabed, areas of young rifting and local seafloor spreading. So what's going on? These young seafloor patches lie next to the volcanic chains themselves formed along the plate boundaries. The young patches of seabed are on one side of the volcanic arcs and the plate boundaries are on the other. Let's see how that looks in a hypothetical profile. The old ocean on the right subducts to the left, the volcanic arc forming above the subduction zone. Now let's allow the plate boundary to migrate to the right, keeping the left side fixed. The trench and the volcanic arc migrate, so the crust on the left or behind the arc is stretched, perhaps to breaking point, allowing new plate oceanic crust to form. This is the model. Our new patches of seabed are so-called back arc basins. And the Sea of Japan is a prime example. Nice and simple. Misleadingly so. Let's see what's happening today. Only these back arc areas are currently rifting. Much of the rest of the plate boundary network is quiet. Just simple subduction. But the segments at Taiwan and Japan are currently not rifting, but the crust is being compressed. Both have seen destructive thrust sense earthquakes this year. So it looks like the plate above a subduction zone can stretch out and be compressed back. That's almost like breathing. So what's going on? We need to look deeper. And over the past 25 years, geologists have got better and better at imaging subductive plates using a method called seismic tomography. It looks at the records of earthquakes that originated on the other side of the world and uses the small variations in these signals from expectations of the structure of the Earth as if it was a uniform set of layers. If parts of the mantle transmit seismic energy faster than expected, then geologists inferred that they're colder, blue on these diagrams, while slower energy transmission, red on here, means warmer mantle. Because the subductive plates come from near surface, they're cooler than the deeper earth into which they're embedding themselves, so they show up as blue zones like this. That these zones of blue coming from the Earth's surface coincide with earthquakes confirms that these images are showing subducting plates. Now it takes a lot of computing power to do this, so images are getting better and better as computer power increases. And you can slice up a subduction zone like this beneath Japan. And these images reveal remarkable structure, 
the Pacific plate beneath Japan flattens off in the mantle. So what's going on? The mantle has a layered structure picked out by its ability to transmit seismic P waves and experimentalists have worked out why. At depths of around 440 to 650 kilometers, the principal mineral of the upper mantle, and that's olivine, changes its crystal structure. Olivine has a relatively open crystal structure of magnesium, silicon and oxygen. But magnesium silicates like this form new crystal structures as they're compressed by the weight of rocks on top, the pressure, through two other forms before settling on the compact crystal structure of perovskite. So the deep mantle is dominantly this mineral, perovskite, unstable at the Earth's surface, for our planet is one of the most abundant minerals of all. We just don't get to see it. But critically, it makes for stiffer, stronger mantle than olivine, so that subducting slabs of oceanic plates have a hard time penetrating it. Some of them pond on this mantle transition zone, and we can cartoon up this behaviour. So as this behaviour changes at depth, the subducted plate interacts differently, moving forwards and back, forcing the subducting corner backwards and forwards, which impacts on the surface. So the arc and trench can move forward and backwards, creating back arc basins, then squashing them over tens of millions of years. Seismic tomography images are changing the way we view the Earth. What goes on in the mantle exerts fundamental controls on what happens at the Earth's surface. Much of this is breaking science. We'll learn much more as the imaging methods improve in the coming years. I've been Rob Butler. Join me again soon for another story from the Ring of Fire of East Asia.